Jason has uh, some instructions for you, and I have one correction in the bulletin. We will not be singing Hail the Festival Day. So those of you who are going to turn to it, we're going to be, and Jason is going to give you some instructions now. Each of you, when you came in, uh, was given a flower, a flower, the symbol of life. Also, Easter, the Sunday where you celebrate Jesus' life that was not bound on earth, but his immortal life as he resurrected and now is seated at the, at the heavenly banquet next to God the Father. So during these next two hymns that we are singing, O Strife is O'er and Christ is Alive, we invite you to come forward with the flower that you took when you entered the sanctuary to help stick it on our cross, to help make our cross look alive this Easter Sunday.
Let's stand and join together in the greeting that is written responsively in your bulletin. Rejoice, heavenly choirs of angels. Rejoice, all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor. Radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Glory and honor, dominion and power be to God forever and ever. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated, please. Welcome to the Easter service at Wesley United Methodist Church. We are delighted that you are here. You already know it's a special day when you see a cross get filled with flowers and when you hear a trumpet blast, a shofar, I mean he went about four or five thousand years of technology between the shofar which was used by the people of Israel in ancient times to summon the 
gathering together and will be used in the future to summon all humankind at the end of days, that trumpet. And he did a beautiful do job on that so far, did he not? A round of applause for this young guy and his trumpet. This is our time of community sharing, and there are an announcement or two, and I'm sure we're going to have some joys and concerns. So uh, I think the announcement is right behind me. Yes. Okay, Jason. Fellow members of the Wesley Church family, can you believe that our building is over 30 years old? It's gone by fast. We've had some additions. We've had some changes, some renovations, and all has been for the glory of God. As the people of Wesley United Methodist Church, we have been entrusted to not only use the facilities, but also maintain and care for our beautiful church. Looking around, the trustees and working with the finance committee have come up with several immediate and long-term goals that we would like to use to help for the betterment of our building and facilities. For example, our east parking lot has several spots in it that is very much in need of repair. You have undoubtedly noticed the potholes. Hopefully your car hasn't noticed the potholes. But that east entrance is highly visible for district events, preschool drop-offs and pickups, direct church activities, scouts, and youth. In the past, the parking lot has been patched and resealed and certainly is indeed for another repair this summer. Estimated cost that the trustees have put together is between $2,500 and $3,500. If it is not repaired, where, as if it's not repaired, redoing the entire parking lot would cost several times much. Long-term needs include replacement of furnace or air conditioners to the original building. As with these needed repairs and upcoming expenses, our church budget is stretched to help cover the normal day operating expenses. We don't have anything in reserve to cover these major expenditures. So because of this, last year, the trustees and the finance took together a special offering to help um, set aside a fund to help with this capital repair Im or improvements. And again, this year, our Easter special offering that we take up on Easter Sunday will be added to that to help us reach our goal so that we can do some of the work on the parking lot and set aside for any up unexpected repairs of air conditioners or furnaces that need it. So during the offering time, we'd ask you to not only remember the regular ties that we have to Wesley Church to help with our overall day-to-day -day budget expenses, but also during the special offering, consider giving to help with these capital repairs. Thank you, Jason. Are there other announcements for the good of the family? People who are in my New Testament seminar, I want uh, to remind anyone who might not have been at the class on Thursday that we will be not having class this Thursday. We'll just back the syllabus up one, one week. Back the syllabus up one week, and a week from Thursday, we'll start in on Romans. This Mr. Thursday, Hornback. This Thursday, supper on the 17th, Baptist Church, anybody who wants to help I'd sure appreciate it. Well, that's Bring cakes or just come and help. We'd, we'd love to have you. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Dick. What time do people show up over there at the First Baptist Church? Yeah. I'll come in around 3.30, 4 o'clock. We'll, we'll be in good shape. Keep you busy from yeah. 3 till 6 or so, right? Right. And, and the, it's a crew that serves anybody who comes in uh, for a meal, and churches take turns. And Thursday's ours. I hope you get a chance to join in that active crew in the kitchen of the First Baptist Church downtown. It's a wonderful outreach. Sit down and get to know some of the people who, uh, who, who come to share that meal from the streets of Parsons, Kansas. Are there any other announcements? Do we have joys and concerns? I'll start off with some that were shared at the first service. Um, the, the family of Donna Harrell, who has passed away, um, sh we wanted to lift that family up in our prayers. I got a call from the former superintendent of schools, Mr. Rudemeyer, this, um, just yesterday, I think it was, and he has been diagnosed with a tumor in his, in his 
brain and also with uh, lung cancer. And he asked if, he, if, if we might pray for him. And I said, of course we will. So Perk Rudemeyer, if you'd add him to your prayers and his family, he's facing some pretty serious surgeries. Are there any others? My brother-in-law, Jim Ower, has inoperable tumor in the left lung. What's his last name, Shirley? Thank you. Now we definitely want to pray for Jim and his family as he walks this uncertain path. Are there others? Gage, embrace, equip, and employ disciples for Jesus Christ. And I invite you now to engage and embrace one another. Make sure no one goes ungreeted. Spread the love of God around. If you see somebody you don't know, go find out who they are. And in our children's church, following the children's message each week, she's got an Easter message. So Misty, come on up and all the kids can come on up too. And we'll go retrieve that pelican from its pedestal and bring it forward. Very good. Yeah, come on, just bring it on up here. And then we'll put it back when we finish. Do we, you've got your microphone, good, okay. And I'll sit down and let you do your work. nervous so be kind <laughs> all right all my little ones what's today easter. easter that's right what do you usually think of when you think of easter what does it mean to you what? family and friends what else guys celebrating the day jesus came back very good seeing a hand down here They bring Easter eggs, that's right. And you? God rising from the dead. God rising from the dead, very good. That is the reason we celebrate Easter. It makes us think of family and friends and Easter eggs and probably candy, even though nobody said it. But we celebrate because, oh, just a second. We, we made um, tombs. We put marshmallows in there. And, um, we put dough around them and put them around them and send them in. Wow. Melted and then the muffin was a tomb. When they opened it up, it was an empty tomb. That's right. It was an empty tomb because Jesus came out. That is, I think, the most awesome Easter activity I've heard in a long time. That is pretty cool. All right, one more. It's about celebrating the fun and sharing what you got in your eggs. That's right. <laughs> you can. Eat. All right, one last one. Giant Easter eggs. Dying Easter eggs. Well, we all heard about Jesus, and we heard about the eggs. So somebody said Jesus rose. No. Jesus rose from the grave on, on Sunday, right? So what did he do on Friday? He died. And why did Jesus die? For our sins. Very good. That's right. So we could be reconnected with God. And when he rose, he rose with new life. Not an earthly life, but a heavenly life. The kind of life that lasts forever. And because he died and rose on, rose on Sunday, we can have that forever life too. The new life. It's not an earthly life. So when you think about eggs, you think about candy, right? Everybody already mentioned that. And sharing what's in your Easter eggs. What else do you think about when you think about eggs and Easter eggs? He went blank. <laughs> What else do you think about? You think about, um, you think about family and 
Family. Well, I don't know. Eggs don't make me think about family in particular, but all right, go ahead. Blank, blank. All right, what, what comes out of the eggs? Chickens. Big, full-grown chickens? No? What kind of chickens come out? Baby chicks. Baby chicks. Brand new life, right? Just like when Jesus rose, he rose with brand new life. So we can all have brand new life with God. So when you, think, when you see Easter eggs, that's what I want you to try to remember, is brand new life. Just like we talked about the, the cross being full of life with the flowers, that's what eggs stand for, too. Eggs never bring anything old in this world. They bring brand new life. All right? You want to say one last thing? To make family and friends. Easter's not making family and friends. All right, guys, let's circle up for prayer real quick, okay? Let's circle up for prayer. Can we get all the eggs back in the basket? Come on, guys. <laughs> and I have a late joy. I'm very happy to see so many people and so many kids here for Easter today. <laughs> children's time.
Thank you. Thank you so much for that beautiful, beautiful music. This is a time we enter into prayer together, one of the most important works we do in the Christian faith, spend time in prayer. So I encourage you to lift your concerns, your joys, spend time seeking the presence of the Holy One, the Risen One, together. And then when we Transition to the Lord's Prayer. Let us work our spirits to pray and not just say the Lord's Prayer, to pray it. Because when we pray it, we will never, it never runs dry. It always will create in us um, a discipleship. It will form us in the disciples to pray and mean this prayer the Lord taught us. But let us first begin in silence. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue our worship of God through the sharing of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings.
Paul had a lot of correspondence with the church at Corinth. It was one of the churches that he planted, founded, interacted with, and nurtured through the years. And those letters needed to keep flowing because there were, there were all of these issues that were coming up in the local church. And one of the issues that Paul had to respond to was the notion being salted in his, his congregation in Corinth that there was no such thing as a resurrection. And that was a, a common held belief by the people who were part of the Sanhedrin. But the Pharisees definitely believed in resurrection, and Paul, of course, proclaimed a resurrection. So he's writing to that concern when in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians he says this. If all we get out of Christ is a little inspiration for a few short years, we're a pretty sorry lot. But the truth is that Christ has been raised up, the first in a long legacy of those who are going to leave the cemeteries. There is a nice symmetry in this. Death initially came by a man, and resurrection from death came by a man. Everybody dies in Adam. Everybody comes alive in Christ. But we have to wait our turn. Christ is first then those with him at his coming, the grand consummation when, after crushing the opposition, he hands over his kingdom to God the Father. He won't let up until the last enemy is down. And the very last enemy is death.
Please stand for the gospel. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, breathlessly panting. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple left immediately for the tomb. They ran neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter, stooping to look in. He saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed the linen clothes lying there, and the handkerchief, the kerchief used to cover his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, took one look at the evidence, and believed. No one yet knew from the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples then went back home, but Mary stood outside the tomb, weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there, dressed in white, one at the head and the other at the foot of where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her, Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Master, if, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can take care. Jesus said, Mary. Turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Jesus said, don't cling to me, for if I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples, I saw the Master! And she told them everything he said to her. This is the glorious word of God for the redeemed people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, please. For the folks who were here last week uh, in, the, in the storm and for the folks who saw the powerful Monday Thursday drama, um, I'm going to ask you to forbear because I have a feeling there's a, a goodly number who might have missed the rest of Holy Week and it's, it's incumbent upon us as Christians to go through Holy Week before we get to Easter. And we remember that there are dark nights between Good Friday and Sunday morning, nights that seemed filled with despair and hopelessness for the people who had put so much stock in the young carpenter from Nazareth, who had listened to him, seen wonders performed, and expected the world to be changed. And now, the one they had looked to was in the grave. Sometimes, Things are too deep for words, so we set them to music. And I want you to hear this story in music. When I finish the resurrection song, I'll invite you to stand while the choir and any of you that might care to join us in Handel's Messiah comes forward and we sing the Hallelujah Chorus together. Let's check this mic, okay, Ethan? How's that? No, it's not quite there yet. Okay, is it there? Can you hear it? Okay. So we'll start a little earlier in the week.
On that night when Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, Judas came and him betrayed in the garden of Gethsemane. Went to pray, couldn't stay, a mob took him away. Look at this, with a kiss, the soldiers couldn't miss. Caiaphas, the high priest said, Jesus, we would see you dead. Come, let's go and Pilate see. Watch him sign your death decree. Screaming bands, shout demands. Pilate washed his hands. He was tried, people lied. They had him crucified. He was scourged. They slapped his face. Savior of the human race led away his cross in tow. Little did the people know. Son of God, Son of God, we kill before we laud. This is Christ, Jesus Christ. We saw him sacrificed. As they watched, the people saw the fulfillment of God's holy law. As they looked upon his face, could they realize he'd taken their place? As they watched, the people saw the fulfillment of God's holy law. As they looked upon his face, could could they realize he'd taken their place? As they watched, the people saw the fulfillment of God's holy law. As they looked upon his face, could they realize he'd taken their place? As they watched, the people saw the fulfillment of God's holy law. As they looked upon his face, could they realize he'd taken their place? Then he died, then he died, they pierced him in the side. Then he died, then he died. They pierced him in the side. The sky, the sky is brighter, is brighter than it was before. The sky, the sky is brighter, is brighter than it was before. They said he was dead. 
thought he was dead. Then the sky grew bright with a holy light. The stone was rolled away on that blessed, blessed day. That blessed day. Resurrection, he comes from the dead. Resurrection, my Lord lives. Resurrection, he comes from the dead. Resurrection, my Lord reigns. Resurrection, he comes from the dead. Resurrection, my Lord lives. Resurrection, he comes from the dead. Resurrection, my Lord reigns. Yes, he lives, my Lord lives. Alleluia, Alleluia. Risen from the dead, as my master said, risen from the grave, all our souls to save. Risen from the tomb, now an empty room. Risen to the skies, all lift up your eyes. Resurrection, he comes from the dead. Resurrection, my Lord reigns. Resurrection, he comes from the dead. Resurrection, my Lord lives. Resurrection, he comes from the dead. Resurrection, my Lord reigns. Yes, he lives. My Lord lives. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our God reigns. Oh, <laughs> 